shot in the arm. <laughs> we had a great time there. It was a celebration. Yes. Praise God to, to make uh, Brother, we got to change his name here, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, we made him an elder. His parents and uh, his mom and all of his uh, siblings came along, friends, and uh, we had a chance to talk about how the contributions that they had made in his life and he had made in theirs and it was just really wonderful. Yeah, it just went on. It was just so great. Everybody was fired up. Uh, then we went to the banquet hall, social hall. They completely redone. Woo, you got me. I didn't know a thing. My wife and I both, we knew nothing about the fact that uh, they had redone the uh, recreation hall. What do they call it now? Fellowship Hall, and uh, and yeah, Nana's Kitchen, which is a professional kitchen, had been completely redone. All of the shelves and the drawers, everything was perfect. Wall was painted, even the raised area was redone. The wood was redone and polished. I used to do it buffed and everything, and uh, all of the uh, the air conditioning, the heater, and, and all of the vents. Uh, and all of the lights were completely redone. Just brand new, brand new place. I just said, whoa, wow. I hadn't seen none of it, too, either. So, um, we got for Pastor uh, Roger and, and um, Elder Glenn now. <laughs> they both worked on it and made it a reality. So, it was just, everybody was just fired up. And just, the food was great, too. Good food. Good fellowship. We're going to do more of that. <laughs> I enjoyed it, and the people enjoyed it. Everybody was happy. Yeah, that nice bus that drove up there, with the people from San Jose. Wasn't that wonderful? Beautiful. Was that a Mercedes bus? A Mercedes bus, it looked like. It looked like a big old Mercedes bus. I said, man, that's style. Just pull up there and park it where everybody can see. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> said, with somebody. It was awesome since saints need to realize then who we really are in Christ. And so that was just nice. Nobody hardly wanted to go home after who we sat up there. Who was so good. And the testimonies were just off the hook. And some of us have been together here over 40 years. Isn't that something? Yeah. Ella Tolliver made the statement, said, I've been here over 40 years. She was a youngster when she... And most of y'all were youngsters when you came. And y'all stayed around. <laughs> All of said, raise your hands. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you. Yeah, so that's good. And that was good. Brother, you missed, you were there, weren't you? No, you weren't there? Oh, you had to work. No, I wish we had made a video of that. But uh, that was wonderful. Anyway, I'm just, let me get myself on the right page here. <laughs> I do have a continuation message from a few weeks ago. I may bring it to a conclusion today. Let's pray, Father God. We thank you for the word that's forever established in heaven. We ask that you would activate the word, bring it from the realm of Rhema to the realm of Logos, that it might be tangible from Logos to Rhema, excuse me, that so it might be a tangible reality in the lives of those who are in the hearing audience, that there would be a supernatural element in what I declare today, activate my mind and my spirit, my soul, that the declaration that needs to be done today will be done in an acceptable way. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Jonah, the second chapter, eighth verse. I know we don't talk that much about Jonah in a lot of the scriptures in the uh, Old Testament, especially Jonah. It's a really good book. Praise the Lord. The title of the message is Possessing God's Promises Despite 
the opposition. How many of y'all encountered oppositions even in this past week? Praise the Lord. This morning I had opposition. People were sending me texts and all that about my credit cards and all, all of it was a lie. You need to go check your credit card. We're going to shut it down. How many of y'all go through that? Yeah. It seemed like every morning about 4 a.m. I'm sleeping good. Ding, 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 whatever the t- chimey sound it makes. Wake me up. And I'm, I said, oh, I'm going to wake my wife up too. So then I got to walk to another room with my phone because I wasn't sure it was important or not. There they were with their lies. And the scammers, yeah, they just seem to have a whole bunch of time on their hands. But anyway, so I went to the other room to make sure it wasn't nothing uh, important because we just uh, dismissed the people, you know, to go home and all of that and make sure nothing had happened an hour or two later. You know how the devil is. So I looked at it last night just to make sure there wasn't nothing going on. And so uh, a week or two ago, the alarm stopped working. Well, it came on, and the side door here, said it has a problem. And so I said, oh, man, I'm sleeping good. Here it is. What time is it? About 3 or 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Woke me up. Had to come all the way here to the church. And it was in the middle of the rainstorm. And I said, what are the thieves trying to break in while it's raining? <laughs> Wait till it stop. <laughs> That's my sense of humor. I'm thinking, there's nobody going to be got any kind of mind would come over here while the rain was coming down. Torrential type rain coming down. It's not even safe to drive on the freeway. And I got to our exit because it had been flooded. I had to go so slow. And then I ran into some water that uh, slashed up. And I said, let me slow down. So I was, I was driving at uh, 40 miles an hour. That's how bad the rain was coming down uh, on uh, 680. But I got over here. And, and then a branch, you see that big branch there? I threw it across the fence. It was stuck under my car. I pulled it out. I heard a noise when I, it happened right on Bird when we came off. Uh, these long branches were out there, and I'd run over it by mistake. It got stuck under my car. So I got here, and I had to pull it a few times, and I got it off, and I, I threw that over. The other one must have uh, uh, got lost en route from the freeway to the church here. But I see it's still over there. But, uh, yeah, it was something else. I said, Lord, bless me. Don't let me have no wreck. Don't let me spin out, because this water's coming down. I'm not used to it coming out as profusely as it was. So that's the way the enemy is. He comes in with all kinds of things when you least expect it. And I thank God that uh, this morning was another example. But we're here. We're safe. Everything has come to a conclusion. We're ready for our next fresh day, which is today. And uh, I'm excited about the things that God has done. So again, the title of the message is Possession God's Promises Despite the Opposition that You're Going to Encounter. Uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So he let us know in advance, the book of Psalms, that we're going to run into all kinds of encounters, and all of them are not going to be positive, even though you're a child of God. Um, Jonah, after he had been incarcerated in the belly of a great fish, how many know about the story about Jonah? He was swallowed by a large fish, and people wanted to debate, it was a whale, no, it was a fish, it was a whale, it was a fish. Funny how people go on and on about it. What difference does it make? The point is that it's big enough to engulf him. So if it was a fish, it was a big fish. And if it was a whale, it was a medium-sized whale. And uh, there's all kinds of documentation about whales swallowing people and things of that nature. So I, I don't get into that anymore. I got other fish to fry. <laughs> things that are more deep. <laughs> no, no pun intended. <laughs> and... Fried fish, especially if I'm gonna get to eat it. <laughs> so I ain't got time for nonsense, arguing for hours and hours. And the people who want to argue ones on the way to hell. That's what gets to me. So I ain't talking to you. Yeah. Things that are important and essential things, you don't even pay attention to it. Like living right, going to church. You have to study and fish and study in whales. And every Sunday you're at the beach rather than in the church somewhere. But anyway, yeah, that's okay to go and get into those fields. So Jonah, after he had been incarcerated in the belly of a, a great fish or whale, whichever one you want, which has swallowed him, made this declaration. I believe it was a whale, based on uh, what has been presented. But I'm not going to get into that today. And the scriptures that indicate it really was a whale. And man tries to help God out, says, a whale's throat. There are some whales in the 1800s that could swallow a man. I said, I, listen, I said, 
God don't need no help. If he says so well, it's so well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's what we have to learn to believe supernatural things. We're here without having to have proof all the time about certain things that happen. We had a testimony last night during the, the ceremony. Uh, I was just thinking about it before he actually mentioned it. There was uh, uh, Elder uh, Glenn had mentioned about a miracle we had in our church here. Yeah. One of our members being, not just the one who's sitting back there in the back row, but uh, Brother Hez, you know, he rose from the dead. Yeah. Was that last year or the year before? The year before. The year dead for how many, 10, 15 minutes. Eight minutes, dead, eight minutes. Clinically dead, really dead. Lord brought him back to life. Hallelujah. Some of y'all already heard his testimony, wonderful right. testimony. Right. All the way back, and all his faculties work. Right. Yeah. You know, all his faculties work, and he, he thinks well, he's got, you know, he's handled, I watched him, he even had his phone out. <laughs> so, <laughs> preaching part of his testimony. So I think God for that, and then we had another one who, uh, Glenn had to be, witness with me on that they called me to the hospital when my sisters were about to pass and when we got there she had passed and uh, so he looked at me and he said to me Dr. Nutt I, the Lord has shown me all these miracle signs and wonders he said one miracle I've never seen before is a person raised from the dead and I said you wanted to be raised from the dead he said yeah yeah there's something we're in the Kaiser hospital she did she hadn't talked for about a few days and I think all the signs left for me just when we came in there. So, uh, and the hospital people, staff was there. Two of them were there. And one lady was um, uh, in the ministry who worked for Kaiser, a chaplain. And so she was there with him. And uh, so I started quoting scriptures to the body. I told her who she was in Christ Jesus. I said, you don't have to cross the bar now. You want to live a little longer, say hi, bye to you, your daughters. One can make it in time. I said, if you want to come back, you can tell the Lord you want to come back for just a short period. You know, and so could you do that for your daughter and for us? Just come back. I said, if you want to start breathing again and uh, contact this life, you can do so because you're a child of God. And if that's your desire, the Lord will give it to you. And uh, about a few seconds later, she opened up her eyes and started talking. The dead body. You know, start talking with my members. Start talking. And her daughter was in, I think, Sacramento. I think Doug had forgotten his part of the story. It was in Sacramento. And then they, they called her to let her know that you wanted to talk to mama, tell her some things, you've been bad. She came back to life to talk to you, to give you instructions. And so she stayed alive long enough for her daughter to get all the way from Sacramento here and talk with her. And then after they had their conversation, she closed her eyes and went back to sleep again. Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. This is the kind of God we serve. And Dougie got to see his miracle. The dead come back to life. With his own eye. And the lady who was the chaplain that was there with us, she saw her coming back talking. You know, when she eyes open up, that got her first. You know, those eyes, because she was lucid. She, and then she began to talk. Oh, man, she just started crying and weeping. My God. People in the cloth who've never seen a miracle. Definitely a person coming back from the dead. She said, after her emotions, said, I've never seen anything like that in all my life. Hallelujah. And confessed that she never believed it was possible. He said, here I'm seeing what the word can do. No one's ever showed me or told me about this. But I'm a witness here that I saw it with my own eyes. Isn't that something? So when we read these stories, God's telling us that Jonah was in the belly of a whale and all of that. He was in the belly of a whale. You just didn't see it, but he was there. Praise the Lord. And so here uh, we find Jonah. He was incarcerated, and he made a statement while he was in the belly of the whale. He was in there three days and three nights. Jesus said in the 40th chapter, what is that? Is that the 12 and 40? I believe it is. 
I believe it was the book of Matthew or John, I forget. Uh, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, so must the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. See, we read those things, and uh, that should be enough for us. We still don't know, don't believe them in the earth, don't leave them in the ground for three days and three nights. We want to take away one. We want to have a Good Friday. Good Friday is too short. You got to, he got to be in there another day. You see what I mean? And, and our scholars say this. I don't care what your scholars say. The Bible said it was three whole days and three whole nights that he was in the bed of hell. Let me just find it right quick. Which one is it? Matthew? 12 and 4. It just came to me. You know, as... as uh, Jonah, Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. So must the Son of Man, that's Jesus Christ, be in the heart of the earth uh, three days and three nights. See, uh, uh, the place where we go when we die is in the heart of the earth. Okay, uh, I'll call it, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not hell. Hell is there in the heart of the earth. Okay, the place where people go when they die, they go there unless they're believers. Today, uh, believers don't go to the heart of the earth. They go to the sides of the north. In Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, it's the city of the great king. To be absent from the body, to be what? Present with, Present with the Lord. So as soon as a believer dies, one who's confessed Jesus as Lord, they don't go to the uh, inside of the heart of the earth. They go to a, a nice, beautiful place uh, in heaven. It's actually uh, the uh, New Jerusalem in construction. So we go to a place that's being built to come down in the 21st uh, chapter of the book of Revelations, uh, the Apostle John begins to talk about the Bride of Christ, which is the New Jerusalem, completed, coming down from the heaven here on earth, and it's situated on earth when that takes place. That's at the end of this age. At the end of this age, uh, the New Jerusalem comes down to earth, the Bride of Christ, the place where you're going to be staying as a child of God after you die until Jesus comes back. While it's in, under construction, your mansion is not finished yet and a host of other things that need to be done, but you get to live there anyway. Same Jerusalem, it's just that it gets redone, completely redone, just like that uh, social hall was redone for us to meet. It was so beautiful. I mean, I was just happy to be there anyway, but I mean, it was just nice. You know, shiny, the floors were all shiny, walls were glistening, and I know about that air conditioner, all the vents were fixed. You know how usually these vents wear out first? And one or two of the slats stick out. And you said, that is ugly in your car. Your kid's been playing with it. Yeah. Y'all you know, never had that happen. <laughs> Funny how the, the, the van, the church van, we took the church van, which is uh, a 15-seater, I believe it is. Is it 16-seater? 15-seater. But my wife did most of the driving. It was for her, her uh, child care center. And the church bought it up. And uh, so the kids would get in there, and they mess with the little vents. And they just... Uh, Ends or whatever it is, and you grab it and pull them out, and it's ugly, but you can't fix them. It's made out of plastic, so you can't put a replacement in it, so you have to do your best with it. But that's the way it is. You know, things change, praise the Lord, and uh, needs to be restored. And so here um, in Jonah 2 and 8, it says, They that observe lying vanity, he in the belly of a whale, forsake their own mercies. And this is something, I, I read this for years and years and never knew what it meant. I know what it means now. So let me explain to you because I think it's going to help you in respect to the subject that we've selected, possessing God's promises despite the opposition. And that phrase, lying vanities, the one that was uttered by uh, Job in the belly of a whale, Jonah in the belly of a whale, whale, says literally what it means is lying emptiness. Let's put that in there. They that observe lying emptiness forsake their own mercy. Uh, too many believers are allowing themselves to be distracted, listen to this, by observing the lying emptiness. The devil will do things to you that may be negative or whatever, but you still have to call it a lie. Because it's contrary to what God says you're supposed to have. And those things are lying vanities. Let me give you a case in point. Everybody gets laid off on the job, like people getting laid off right now. Working for Google and working for, what's the name of that? Tesla. And they lost their job. That's the reality then. It seems real. It is when they give you your paycheck, that was real. But by faith, you have to call it a lying vanity. So if this paycheck doesn't mean it's the end of my employment. That means that God has got something better for me 
that he's going to direct to me at the right time. So you can't observe the line. It seems real in the natural, but it's a lie in the spiritual. Speak things that be not as though they were. The God kind of faith. Speak things that be not as though they were. And so that's what you have to do. You lost your job, you got your pink slip, and you got your house, you don't have any more income coming in physically. But then you have to be able to say that God's going to replace what I've lost. Hey. If what they presented to me is a lying vanity, but I have the skills and abilities to handle a job, I just got to find a place that will uh, and hire, uh, hire me and give me the income that I'm going to lose for a number of months. And then hopefully I'll get a raise so that I'll make it up in three or four months the money I lost. Don't let me lose my car. Don't let me use your, my house. And I, I'm trusting in you, Lord God, to, to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think according to the power that works in us. It's according to the power. Holy Ghost, he looked that up. He's talking, he's talking about Holy Ghost power, Apostle Paul, that works in you. It's going to make a change. The change that you want from the Lord. And then people see you about six months later, it took six months to get a job. God was working all that time to get you a job. Six months later, you're in a better job, Amen. making more money, treating, treated better than you've ever been treated, treated on other jobs that you run for 15, 20 years. That's, right. Come on. That's the kind of God. So you've got to see things. You've got to paint a picture of the reality that God wants you to have. You can't hold on to the things that have been presented by this fallen world system. Praise God, lack of faith. You've got to speak what God would have you have. And you're skilled. They shouldn't have laid you off if they have their own agenda. So you have to have your agenda. And your agenda is whatever a man does, I'm still going to trust in God with all my heart. Lean not to their own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your, watch this, paths. Whatever they are, however many they are, he's going to direct you. Let me go through Psalms here. Proverbs 3. I'm going to write to the page and see if I can get to the chapter 4, 3 and 5, I think. Three, look at that. I'm going to write to it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. See, you don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. You've got to think in terms of what the Lord would think. And as a child of God, we need to change, be, not, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to renew your mind with the word of God so that things differently. When things bad come against you, you've got to be able to quote what God says, not what man says and what the circumstances dictate. That's what faith is all about. Speaking things that be not. Said the God kind of faith is speaking things that be not as though they were. So you've got to take a different slant on what you see and what you're experiencing in your life. Let me read the verse again. Uh, Proverbs, the uh, third chapter, fifth verse. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways, plural, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Regardless of how many ways that you encounter in your life, he will direct your paths, plural also. <laughs> You say, there's only one path. No, there's a whole bunch of paths. And the path you're going to end up on is dictated by the faith that you exhibit. Now, the Lord can have a job for you in two months, but your faith is not at that level. So you got to wait another three, you got to wait another three months, six months to get it. The devil is misdirecting you and causing you not to be able to hold on to what the Lord is presenting you with. So things happen quickly. Okay, and, not, and trying to figure out how is he going to do it. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it because he's promised me he'll take care of me. Now, me, I'm going to share my testimony again. Some of you may have heard it 10, 15 times. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, that, the, and what was being said there by Paul is that the repetitive nature of hearing a testimony. So if God has done something for you, people need to hear it over and over again because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So don't say, well, I done heard that before. Yeah, maybe you have, but some others haven't. Maybe you need to hear it again because you're having a problem now and you're not operating in faith the way that you should. That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on, man. So when you get healed or delivered or set free, the testimony I shared with you at the beginning is based upon a person who's in our church. That was uh, 
That was almost 12 years ago. And I shared it today. I don't think I've shared it for, it's been quite a few months that I've shared that. Before the end, it was a few years. But I need to share it. You need to share what God has done for you. Whenever you have an opportunity. When we open the, uh, the podium up, and, you, and they say, well, it's time for testimonies, you need to come up and share what God has done for you. Amen. And if he gave you a job, I know Ella has, but he shares almost, whenever you have an opportunity, about the job that he had, the promotion on the job. He already had a good job, but a significant promotion. So God let him, and then they created a job for him Amen. where there was no job. Made a job for him in corporate America. And paid him more money, gave him more people, more authority. Wonderful God. I'm sitting at my desk enjoying myself. I worked at home. People working at home now. I worked at home before they let people work at home. Because I'm a king's kid. I had a professional job in systems sales, and uh, I wasn't the manager at that time, but they saw fit that I should work at home. They made me a manager, and they made me a director in the company. But before that, I'm sitting at the house, and, uh, well, I had just gotten promoted, but I'd been at, I'd worked at home before then. And uh, so I was, my wife and I, we'd have breakfast and just enjoy ourselves and Sometimes at the house, sometimes at the restaurant. I had no, no clock as long as I got the job done. They didn't care what I did. Just get the job done. Get some sales in here. Finish the project you're working on, on a t- in a timely basis. That's all they cared. I didn't have no time clock or nothing. So I sleep as late as I wanted to sleep. And then some walk down the, the quarter, the highway, to my office at the end. A nice view of the street. I could see some horses on the hill. My wife had the office where you can see the horses on the hill. Then there's someone, if you look out the window, you got a nice meadow in front, horses running back and forth. And you just stop and say, ain't God good? (laughs) So my office, you couldn't see, uh, you could see the street, but you couldn't see the the meadow with the horses running back and forth. And uh, so the phone rang. And uh, my manager and so this is next to my last company. See, next to my last. About three companies before the end. And uh, they called me and said, I'm sorry, Mr. Nutt, but we have some bad news for you. We're going to have to terminate you because we were absorbed by another company. TRW has come and bought us out. And they said, they'll keep some of the people, but the management staff has to go because we have our own people that are in management. And unfortunately, he's part of management. He may be a good guy and all that, but he got to go. I was in management at that time. They just made me in the manager. And uh, so my, my, the vice president of the company that I had worked for, and I was a manager now in that company, he's the one to face the call. He said, I'm sorry, Will. They called me Will. That's my, my marketing name. But you got to go. So less than 20 minutes later. And then my wife and I, see, you got to act like you got the victory in the face of apparent defeat. Come on, man. Yeah. My wife come down the hallway. She told me on the phone. I was just sitting in the chair. She said, what happened? I said, uh, she probably heard part of the conversation. She said, he just fired me. She started to laugh. <laughs> I started to laugh too. They fired me. Just bought a new car for my daughter, Kia. And I also bought myself a new car because they gave us good discounts. You get two cars in one. And so this is in the middle of the 90s. And so I said, there goes the car. Zoom, gone. Well, we laughing. There goes not just my car, but kids' car. <laughs> we laughed about that. <laughs> and then uh, I said, we ain't losing nothing. We ain't losing nothing. Everything we have, we get to keep. The Lord's going to work a miracle. I don't know how, but he's going to do it. Yes. See, you don't know how, but he's going to do it. Right. And we don't worry about it anymore. And... Uh, well, because we only had about 10 minutes before the phone was going to ring again. But we're sitting in there laughing about what's going to, what's going to lose and all that. And they said, oh, ain't, we ain't losing nothing. We're the king's kid. Uh, one of my mentors from the past called me up. He said, Will, we've been looking for you for three months. When you left the company, I, one of the other companies I worked for, 
uh, I had left a few years before, and they didn't have any information of where I would live, nothing. He kept an old phone number. No, not old phone number. He knew I lived in San Jose. And at that time, for this company that had just fired me, i have been traveling. Well, wait, when did that happen? Was that the same one? Okay, I, it happened twice. But, but anyway, uh, he called me, and I, was on the, I took the phone, and uh, he said to me, I got another, he'd already found me for another job I'm not going to talk about. And he said that, uh, I've just been thinking about you. And when, How's this thing going? I said, he just fired me. Oh, he laughed and laughed. I just got fired, man, just a few minutes before you called. He said, I said, he said, don't worry about it. He said, you got great skills. That's why I call you five minutes later after I just got fired. He says, I, I just started working for another company, and they asked me if I knew anybody that was technically astute. And you're the first one I thought about. And he said, so uh, I need you to come help me to watch my back so I don't get any arrows. He said, you know, these new companies, They'll shoot you in the back any minute. And I don't know none of the folks, but I know you. And I know you have the skills that you can help me. Watch my back and get the job done at the same time. And so uh, we went out and had lunch. And uh, to make a long story short, after the lunch, they had hired me in a new job. Isn't that something? Making more money than I was making than the one that just fired me. Well, actually, uh, he told me about a new job that I had to interview with. And so that, uh, that was a Thursday. I got fired. And I told him, I said, I'm working for this company. What's that company? No, I'm getting these things run together. Huh? So let's just jump forward here. <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be. Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, I was hired in that company. I went in and interviewed the guy I happened to be here in town, and I got the uh, interview. And, uh, but I told him I can't come. Yeah, I did. I, it's all coming back now. I told this uh, the guy who was hiring me, although he, my mentor had worked for him also, he told me, uh, uh, you can come to work tomorrow. I said, I can't do that. And this was like, uh, that's Thursday well, or Friday. I forgot what it was. But I, I called, they, uh, I told him that uh, the company I worked for, they needed to have somebody who had the skills to handle assignment here in California. And uh, uh, they decided that they'd hire me too early because they fired me too early because they had nobody with skills that could go after the business was there. Oh, so uh, they wanted me to go to this place on, I think it was a Tuesday, the very next week, and do a presentation so they can get $800,000 here from a big contract in California. And I was the only one here, the only one with the skills that could meet what they required. And so I told them that I will stay with the company and give me more money treat me better, and so that's a few days later. I went and did a presentation down in the uh, southern part of California, and uh, they liked me. And so uh, I said, now, they like me, that's good, but you're going to have to uh, have a, a signed contract that I can see from them before the month is over. I'm leaving. I have another company that's ready to hire me, and they wanted me to come the very next day after I had talked with them. So if you can finish the, the transaction, by uh, the end of this month, I'll stay with you. If you don't, then I'm going to go with the new company. Sure enough, they didn't finish it in time. So I went to the, with the new company. But isn't that something, how the Lord set it up and, uh, and uh, make sure that your income comes in? So I didn't lose my car. I didn't lose my house. We lost nothing. And, you know, my daughter, Kia, knows what the Lord did behind the scenes. Can you imagine her measure of faith as a result of seeing how God intervened in a hopeless situation, allowed her to keep her car until it was time for it to be turned in on another car. And then uh, the Lord, my wife, seeing and watching how things went down, how the Lord protected us. And so that's the kind of God we serve. He'll protect you. So let's go back to lying vanities. Let me just finish this thought here. Uh, literally, lying vanities means lying emptiness, as I stated before. And you're not supposed to uh, observe lying emptiness. Uh, presented by Satan and his cohorts rather than focusing on the Lord. Proverbs 13 and 12, hope deferred make up the heart sick, but when it, uh, the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. See, our hope, sometimes we get caught up in our hope that's been postponed by the Lord. It makes it, says it makes your heart sick. You're not supposed to be focused on that. 
It's just deferred. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It's just going to come at the point of time. And that's why we have to have patience in the things of God. Trust the Lord that he's going to bring it to pass, and he doesn't tell us when. That's the part that, uh, that's why you need patience. And your patience possess you, your soul. Your mind and your intellect and your emotions are all governed by the patience that you permit to operate within yourself as a child of God. I've noticed that just about everything God the Lord has, except for maybe the testimony I just shared there, five minutes, you know, you got an alternate job, even though you may not take it right then. It's available. I could have just said, I'm coming to work tomorrow. No, uh, the Lord had some other things he wanted me to do. And he wanted to prove to me, because I didn't know at that point that the stuff that, why all this trunk sitting in my garage? Lord had told me about 10 years before to take all of the uh, training classes that I take, the major ones, and to put it in a trunk out of my garage. So the trunk in the garage had all the materials that I learned, schools I'd gone through, that I'm going to need to do this presentation on Tuesday. Isn't that something? And I, when I was cleaning out my garage, I was wondering, why can't I throw this away? And I had a strong impression. Keep it because the Lord has a reason. He didn't tell me. So 10 years later, uh, when they asked me to go do this job down in uh, Southern California, then I found out that they needed the material that I had learned 10 years before from one of these special schools that I was sent to. And I was one of the few people that had the opportunity to go to these schools. And so I dug it out and just skimmed through the material and went and did the presentation. And we won the business and just signed it in a timely manner. So the point is, hope deferred, make the horse sick. So the Lord deferred. He didn't tell me then that the 10 years later you're going to need this information. And that's why we shouldn't get caught up in well, the Lord had, hadn't done anything, he hadn't said anything. Yeah, he has. He set you up 10 years before you had to use it. No reason for him to tell you nothing until the time that it's right to release the information to, uh, of what he had done for me 10 years before. And I just say the same thing to you. If you're living for God the way you should, he'll do something 10 years before, and you don't know nothing about it. It's sitting out there in my garage until, my God, 10 years later. It gets revealed. Right. It's sitting there. He don't say nothing. The Lord doesn't say nothing. You got to walk by faith. Right. Think I gotta, you got to believe that that trunk and that space needs to stay there until the Lord releases me. Oh, He'll release you at the right time. Ten years later was the right time. Oh, and then ten years later, I know about I know about those job. Ten years later, about that job, the Lord did. There's a whole bunch of things in your life he knows about that he's trying to set you up for. Right. So there's certain training and teaching you need to go through it because you're going to need that stuff, it's carnal knowledge that you're going to need 10 years later in order to, to continue in life in this fallen world. Right. It does take effort. It does take work. Right. See, people, and I see folks that they're not studying in school, especially uh, the youngsters, and I tell them, even my grandkids, I tell them, you've got to get the grade. We live on planet Earth. We don't live in heaven yet. So you've got to prepare yourself for what life has to offer you, the challenges you're going to encounter. You've got to be trained. Money doesn't come automatically. Y'all depending on us. We're not going to live forever. What you going to do when we're gone? I said that we didn't rear people to be harmless. You should have skills to be able to feed yourself and feed your family and take care of yourself in a stylish way. We're in California here. There's a lot of nice stuff here, but it takes work to prepare yourself to receive them. And so I tell them that, I said, and your job is to do well in school, to learn all the material you need to learn so that when opportunity comes, you're prepared. Amen. That's with everything. Everything, nothing comes free, takes work. And uh, I was looking at, uh, even with the next generation, uh, you know, I like to look at Roger, Pastor Roger, and, and Pastor Dougie, and all of them, those guys, they finally got it. They just got it. I got to prepare myself for the skill. You know, and, and I got to be able to manage the people. If I'm going to get in management, I got to learn how to handle people, how to talk to them, how to treat them properly. That starts when you're working with your, your peers. You know, they see wh how you treat people. They don't ever hire you if they end up being a mentor, being a, a president of another company. They're going to call for three months trying to find you to place a job. <laughs> you're a rascal. You call yourself a Christian, but you didn't act like one. This is what the guy said who called me to let me know about one of the jobs that he provided me with. He says, of all the guys I work with, he said, you're the only one that I could trust. 
the way you treated people, the knowledge that you had about the material, you're the kind of person I need. I knew that if an arrow was coming my direction, that you'd stop it. You see what I'm saying? So all of those qualities and attributes that don't have nothing to do with being right here in the church reading the Bible, it has to do with reading life and preparing yourself for life and the Bible directing on how you're going to handle life issues and situations and applying it to the life issues. And that's what I said to one of my grands, one of my grandsons. I said to him, I said, listen, the stuff that doesn't mean that seem meaningless and that's not going to help you at all, that you can't see how it's going to help you, it's going to help you. You got to, it's not wasted time, it's not wasted effort, but then I can't go sit in the classroom for you. Your mama can't go. Your daddy can't go. None of your relatives and people that love you can go. Your sister can't go. So you've got to learn it yourself. It's a job that you have to develop yourself to deal with life's issues. So you can't just go out and start preaching, oh, I'm going to trust in the Holy Ghost. Well, no, you've got to have some knowledge in your mind before the Lord will see that you're an acceptable candidate for the power of God to operate. So then once you've done what you're supposed to do, then the Holy Spirit will come and assist you and things that you can't do. And you can have the confidence to believe that he's going to help you with stuff you don't know. Because you did all you could with things you needed to know that he impressed you to learn so that when the appointed opportunity comes, you can deal with it. Don't hear me now? See, certain jobs can be offered and you say, I, I can't handle that job. I mean, that was in my vocabulary. Any job God brings to me, I can handle because I did everything a human being can do to prepare myself for that day that that job is going to come. And whoever the manager is or the head guy, I ain't afraid of none of them because I got the Spirit of God in me. I have the one who knows everything. And if he needs to impart something to me so I can exhibit what I've learned, he will at the point in time bring it to my remembrance. All things, whatsoever I've commanded you, natural, spiritual, wherever context is in, the Lord will bring it to me in a way that I can present it to the individual that needs to hear it a certain way. I don't know where that came from, but it's good. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, so get yourself prepared. Whatever you're in, and quit complaining. What it is, it is what it is. Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And he will work in you to will and to, to do of his good pleasure. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Let's go there. Y'all okay? We're not going to be too long. Much longer, but y'all don't hear this nowhere else. Might as well hear from me. Shoot, that's what I'm here for. I thank God for preparing me. What did I say, the fourth? Where is it in here? Look in here. Where is it? Four and what? Say it one more time. Yeah, Philippians. Maybe two, yeah. And eight, two and nine. Um, I'm off. That's okay. It's in the book of Philippians. And I'll uh, what chapter? 12 and 13. Okay, 12 and 13. Yes, yeah, sir. 12, 13, and 11, huh? Then Bob, too. Let's read it. Two and uh, 12. Watch this. Uh, and here's Paul talking to the Philippian church. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, and not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Watch that. Y'all see that? Yes. Reverential fear is what that means. Reverential fear and trembling. Reverential fear for the Lord. Knowing that you need to work out the things that are in you. And uh, there should be a fear and reverential fear for God that you're, not, that you're doing the best you can do. That you're not lazy. You should be afraid of God. If you're lazy, not doing what you're doing, sleeping when you need to be working. Okay, you should be ashamed. You should be afraid. Especially if you call yourself a believer. You're not doing what you're capable of as a human being. All right, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Reverential fear for God. 13th verse. For it is God who worketh in you, 
Who works in me and in you? God. Both of it means it's two things. Your will and to do. How to do it and the desire to do it. Will is desire. I want to do it. Amen. To do means the things that needs to be done. The know-how. He works into you the, the desire and the know-how to address whatever situation comes to you as a child of God. And in your mind, you should think in those terms. Whatever I'm going to need to be successful, that's going to be worked into me by Father God. Yes. The know-how. And my will tells me I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Yes. And he strengtheneth me with might by his spirit in my inward man. I have unlimited power. Verb might means unlimited power and ability. In my inward man, he didn't put it in your head, he put it in your inward man. And the inward man then affects your head. How you think? The Lord gave me a word when I was talking to an elder last night. He had a bunch of elders at the meeting there. Elders that had come out of this ministry. And pastors. I was talking to a pastor. And uh, I told him I was sitting on my couch. Watch this. He was already fired up. And I said, I was watching TV. I was so tired that day, I was downstairs. And the, all the grandkids were gone, so it was just me and the TV and snoring. I didn't snore, but sleep. Most of the time I spent sleeping. I was just leaning down in the chair like that. That's how tired I was. Way down, my legs sticking all out from the chair. TV was on. I went to one of those, uh, not Gladiator, but one of those movies where they do a whole bunch of fighting with weapons and things like that. And this guy was bad. He was seen he was endowed with supernatural power. He won all the wars and all the battles or whatever. And I went up there and tweaked the TV. I don't know what it was, turn channel or not to turn down, make it louder or less. And the Lord spoke to me when I stood up. He said, you looking at him, he seems like he's a superman, huh? He said, you have super ability in you. Amen. There ain't nothing. I'm telling you, it's pastor, this. There ain't nothing you can't do without the Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I said to him, right to his face, because I saw him when he was watching what was happening during the ceremony. I said, what you were thinking is that why is God doing this stuff for the other people? Don't I count? I said, brother, I go through that. See, people are getting all these blessings and stuff of that nature. Then you're tempted to think, when is my turn coming? I said, you were thinking, when is my turn? I said, I saw it in your eyes. You're glad for what the person's getting, but you want God to take care of you. I said to him, I said, I'm going to tell you like the word that came to me when he interrupted my nice movie. <laughs> the Lord can play with you. There's good fighting scenes, and all this guy whipped all the enemies, just beat them down. I said, go ahead, take care of him, beat him up. <laughs> Bad man, beat him up. I said, you have supernatural endowment in you. That whatever challenge comes against you, whatever warfare, whatever enemy, cohort of the devil, you can beat them down and take the victory. Every one of them, you don't lose nothing. I said, you have a desire for God to see you and help you? I said, he's going to bring it to pass, brother. He's going to prove to you that you have a lot more that hasn't been used in you, that's available for you. Just start using what you got. Praise the Lord. The Lord will manifest what you want. He was dumbfounded. He didn't know what to say. I said, and that's how it comes. Sitting there watching you, minding your own business, I'm tired. And then he comes right in the middle of your movie, he glimpses of, he said, he looks like a powerful man, huh? You got more power than that because you serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever abilities you need, he will give it to you. That's what I say to you all out here today. You're living for the Lord. What abilities you have, what abilities you need. He will do exceedingly, abundantly, above All you can ask 
to think according to the power that you permit. Dunamis power is what it is. You look it up in the Greek. Unlimited potential. Holy Ghost power that you permit to operate within you. That's another reason to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm saved and sanctified. I, I feel okay. I don't need no Holy Ghost. Yes, you do if you're going to deal with this life, this world that we're in today. You need supernatural ability. It ain't coming from you. It's coming from the Holy Ghost through you. I hope y'all getting this today because this is not scripted. But let me, let me get back to well, the subject. Proverbs 4.23 the, this is from the Amplified Version. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. No, I want to go back one page. Yeah, we're not going to miss this. If the person has examined his Bible when he has uh, his heart uh, begins to be sick because of delays in the, the petitions of the Lord, when you get to a point where he's my heart is tired of waiting on the Lord. I don't know if I had to give up because it's taking a long time for me to see the manifestation of promise. It's taken years and years and years and I don't know if I can take any more. I'm about ready to give up. Proverbs 4 and 20 through 23. My son, attend to my words. You got to attend to his words. And what you'll find when you fall in those states, uh, you've been looking and listening to everything else except listening to your word. So the Bible, watch this. My son, Proverbs 4 and 20, attend to my words. You need to attend to the word of God. Incline your ears into my saying. You got to put your ear out there and be ready to hear what he got to say to you. 21, let them not depart from your eyes. You can't let the words of God depart from your eyes. You got to keep it fixed in front. They used to have platelets as the children of Israel that would slap against their heads. You look, a leather... Uh, claw, uh, leather piece of material and written on it with scriptures. And when they walk, it pop, hit them side the head. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> to keep their mind physically, that's what they did. And their kids, they made little plates. Even now, you look at the Israelis, they have these leather strips with, with scriptures written on them. So as they walk, they slap them on the head and remind them what the word says. Y'all got it? Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Proverbs 4 and 22. For they are, the word of God is. They are life unto those who find, you got to find it. Isn't that something? Why I got to find something? Why can't it just be, that's where I can just reach it without thinking about it. I got to go search for it. Yeah, you got to search for it. So I'm sitting there laying there. And then I, all the Lord has to do is tell me, that's a bad dude in there. He's fighting like that. You're a bad dude too. You got a weapon. Your weapon is your warfare. I'm not carnal, but mighty true God for the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imagination, every high thing. Hallelujah. It rages itself against the knowledge of the truth and bringing into captivity. You got to bring into captivity every thought in obedience to the word of God. You got to bring it into captivity. My son, attend to my words. Let them not depart from your eyes. You've got to find for you. You don't want to go through this stuff. Other people close to you, they, they can't fully understand. They're not supposed to fully understand. God knows, and you know God. And you just need to open your mind and come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace to help in the time. You, I need some help. You need to say that out your mouth. You don't want hurting. You don't want to go into problems. You don't want to need direction. Say, I need direction. Amen. 21, let them not depart from your eyes. Proverbs 4 and 21. Keep them in the midst of your heart. You got to keep God's word in you. After a period of time, things slip. You know, and Paul warns us about this in the second chapter, the book of Hebrews, verse 1. Let not the things that you've heard and seen slip. And uh, I looked it up in the Greek, and it float to flow past you. So there's a window of opportunities in front of you. And the context of that is the things you've heard and seen, they come before your eyes. 
But then the problem is, we let those things that are reinforced us in what God's going to do go past the window of, of grasping and taking it. So after a while, so much time has gone by, the windows are way back there years ago. Because you haven't reinforced what God intends for you to do, keeping the word before you. And so even I, as a pastor, there's some things I'm not sharp on anymore. So you know what? He lets me slip. He missed me. He changed me. Then I have to go back and read that scripture over again, write it out again, memorize every word again, so that I'm fresh the next time with more and more. And I got to keep doing that for the rest of my life. You got to listen to the word over and over again, repetitively, so it becomes a part of you, so you can just spout it out when you need it, so you can hear it, and your faith gets increased. You don't want to hear it, then it's come out of your mouth. And you're more, more apt to believe what you say out your mouth than you are to receive from anybody else, even the pastor. If you get enough word in you, say it, say it out loud, praise the Lord, especially if you've got a challenge, say out the word you need to say. Say it loud, praise God. Make it resonate inside your mouth and go to a place where you can say it without people saying you're crazy. Because people are so quick to call you crazy because you're doing things they're not used to. We spend all this time with all that noise, commercials and stuff. I say, oh, yeah, the man is just so full of noise. Yes. Sometimes I turn the, turn the TV off. The, the music, I'm right there. I just turn it off. I don't want to hear none of the lies. One lie on top of another. Look, it sounds like it's the truth, but it's a lie. I don't want to hear it. They're not saying the majority of them are. Some of them, you say, well, Pastor, you can't be so hard. They're just trying to make a living. Yeah, but they need to find something else. They're not a constant lies. I had a job we went to the line. And the equipment that I'm selling, I made sure it worked. Oh, I didn't sell it. Nowadays, it doesn't matter. Just sell it and get the money anyway. You have to have scruples and boundaries to keep you from doing those kind of things. Whatever field you're in, we're almost there. Y'all okay? Yes. Now, let me go back to it. Proverbs 4 and 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thine eyes unto my sins. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of my dying heart. Proverbs 4, 20 and 21. And 22. For they are life unto those who find them. That's where we were. If you don't find it, then it's not life to you. You want life? How many want life? In whatever capacity. You want life. I do my mind. I want my mind to be fresh and sharp and free of pressure and things of that nature. But he said, you got to find them. And health unto all the flesh. I love that part there. Health to all your flesh. It, you know, it's, it actually, one of the renders says, health to all your bones. You know, marrow of the bones where things begin. That's where the blood is and mixes in with the rest of the body. And it's just distributed by our blood supply for healing and for wholeness and soundness. See that? Fine. It says, hope it's, no, it's here. 22. For they are life unto those who find Zoe. And find them and help to all of them. You got to find what God has for you. That means you got to be seeking for it. You got to be willing. That's, that's what the pastor was. He said, I, What do I have to do to get the blessing that I see? See that? So the Lord's going to direct his path. You know, all your way. We, we went to that scripture. All our ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your paths. What path do you need to go to? Go, go to A all the way up till it gets to B, and then go to C for a while. And then you go all the way up to D, then you go here. So, you know, we need the Holy Spirit to direct us, you know, through the paths that we're going to have to go through to get to the, the goal that we have in mind. So the picture that we have, which is an error, is one path. No, I have a path, all kinds of paths to get to what you need to get to in order to receive the success that God has for you. And you've got to be willing to be led, pliable. He said, delight yourself in the Lord. Become pliable. I mean, you've got to be pliable if it's just one, just go one path. Just walk straight and you'll get there. No, no, you're going to have to walk different courses. And the Holy Spirit's going to lead you. Delight yourself and become pliable in his hand. In the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. You let the Lord lead you, 
He'll get you the way you're desiring it and manifest it for you. And you got to be willing to hear and to follow as he directs you. You might have to do some changes in your world world, change in your mindset, and all that in order to get to where the blessing is hid. You've got to find it. It's hidden. Hidden truth. Hidden, hidden manner. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is going to direct you. You can't do it with your carnal mind. You need the Holy Ghost to direct you to hidden manner. You know something? Why would you put something like that? Hidden manner in the Word of God. Unless it exists. How many of y'all been looking for a hidden manna? Hidden bread. You know, what it says in the, in the Hebrew is, what is it? Is what, what it actually means. What is it? When they first saw manna, they didn't know what it was. It's like believers now. They, the word of God can be right in front of them. They don't, they don't discern it. They can't discern the word of God. They don't understand this is a blessing for you. But you have to be able to ingest it. So it become a part of your being. Is this too deep? No. Y'all feel good, don't you? See how, see how you feel when you hear a, more, a word spoken in due season? How good is it? You're feeling good because something been, that's beneficial yes. to you. Yes. That's supernatural. Yes. You hear enough about this world. You go to the news, you want to hear uh, the version of what's happening in the world. But you go to the word, meditate on it. That's when you begin to get the morsels. And the Holy Spirit reveals what it really means to you in the circumstance you're in. And then tears from this stream. <laughs> God, you revealed it to me. Thank you. I've been looking at this thing for days and days. And I couldn't discern it. Thank you for discerning it for me. So I can get benefit out of it. For life's situation, I'm still on planet Earth. I'm not in heaven yet, so I need you to direct me. My course, and all the ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your paths. Steps of a jeeper of God, a mighty champion. I'm a mighty champion. What about you? Amen. Not a good man, but a champion. Steps of a champion, champion, order of the Lord. And he delighteth in his ways. Though he fall down, he shall not be utterly destroyed. Because the Lord shall lift him back up. We're still human, so we have to slip or fall. You've got to confess it. Lord, forgive me. I missed it on that one, but I won't miss it the next time. And even if I do, forgive me, because it wasn't intentional. Can't play with God. Can't play with God. Romans 9. I keep saying that, huh? Well, I want 22 here. Uh, Proverbs 4, 22. For they are the words of God. They are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Yes. It's the marrow, the marrow. If you're sick or whatever, you need to quote this. Yes. Health to all the marrow. Yes. So everything that gets touched by my blood, yes. and I've been blood washed in the blood of Jesus, is healed. Yes. You said I'm healed. Yes. Keep that heart with all diligence, 23rd verse. For out of it are the issues of life, the wellsprings of life. One of the other one things. You want the things that got to flow out of you? What I'm saying here. You got to put, expend some, some effort. It doesn't come automatically. Diligence means you got to work out your own soul salvation with fear and amplified version for Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. And above all, that you guard, for out of it is the flow, the springs of life. Enemies trying to make our lives, our hearts sick and cold towards God because out of it flows springs of life. Y'all see that? Yeah, well, praise God. I thank God for you. I have a good part, but I'm gonna have, I need time to go through it. Come back next week. Some stuff I shared I haven't talked about for 15, 20 years. The revelation I have here will boggle your mind. I'm not going to share it today. I'm going to talk about the forbidden planet. We're going to get scientific for a while. Then we're going to convert it into something that's supernatural. 
you will definitely be blessed. The eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you might comprehend with all the saints the length, the depth, the breadth, the height, and to know the love of God that pass off all understanding. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. Here it is again, according to the power that you permit to operate within you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's it. Uh, and those who are in the Zoom land, and those who are here in the auditorium, we have a good number of people that are here today. Give yourself a hand for being able to come. Yeah. And for those, you're also here, although you're seated at your house, wherever, your couch, because you're taking a word in. God doesn't care whether you lay on. I tell folks, and he said, that pastor, something else. I can receive from the Lord, I can lay on my side. Lay on my back. I don't have to pray with the prayer posture that people say. In fact, if you go back and you look at Elisha, actually Elijah, he was sitting with his knees. See, I, I didn't have, it was awkward. In fact, it would be painful to have to pray that way. Uh, he crosses, I think he had his legs crossed, and he was sitting up like that. I get tired of that after a while. It doesn't matter whether you're on your knees. Let's get on our knees. Why? God hears me if I'm standing up. Oh, come on. <laughs> he has me driving my car with my hands on my wheel. The Lord hears me. With one hand holding the car wheel, steering wheel. The other hand. I don't have to get on, on my knees because you will. There ain't no power coming from being on my knees. Power comes from faith in the things of God. So whatever your posture is, walk washing dishes, putting a nail on the wall. All of a sudden you can pray right there. You can stop your prayer. So about hit my thumb. Thank you, Lord, for not letting me hit the thumb. And Lord God, I've been missing a whole bunch. If you got the word in you, he'll give you a revelation. And you'll talk to yourself. Be yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's praying in the Holy Ghost because he quicken you, maybe with natural things, to prompt you to go to the next level in him. Y'all hear me? Amen. So if you're going through a challenge right now, get to a quiet place. In fact, I'm, with me, I, I like driving my car in this in front of the Lord. Can't nobody know, nobody know what you're talking about. I can holler in tongues and everything. I don't have to explain nothing. So if you're going through a challenge, find yourself a place where you can drive without a lot of, not, lot of, without a, a lot of traffic. Maybe for about 15, 20 minutes. So you can drive up the hill, like going to Fremont, over Fremont, over the hill, into the, uh, the rest of the, the Bay Area. Get on a road that's not going to be too crowded. And just start praying in tongues. Amen. Just start praying in tongues. And put your mind focused on something that you need from the Lord. And he'll quicken your mind uh, with things you need to do related to it. We don't know how to pray as we all, but the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with moanings and groanings, unknown to the hearer. So while you're doing that, praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit will take it and give you revelation knowledge about what needs to be done to fix the situation in your life. If it's the health issues, that's in your mind. The Lord knows it's in your mind. So Lord, I need direction on how to do this. You know, I need supernatural intervention from you. I need you to come help me. If there's something that's an obstruction, I need you to remove it out the way. Ah, oh my God, move it out the way. Amen. I need a word from the Lord. I need you to speak to me. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart. Speak to my mind. Change the circumstance. Change the situation. Build me up on the most holy faith as I pray in the Holy Spirit. I don't know what I'm praying, but I know you're hearing. I know you're directing me on a path that I should take. I acknowledge you, Lord God. Lead my steps on whatever path I need to go to to receive the bounty you have stored away from me as a child of God. Lead me. Don't leave me. You said you'll never leave me, nor forsake me. I feel forsaken right now, but you don't do that. You'll stay with me until the end. You'll be my helper, my guide, my stand alongside with. The prayer of Cletus, the Holy Spirit, 
will stand with me against any opposition that comes against me. Disease is trying to come. It has come. It's trying to live in my body, the temple of the Holy Ghost. You said, no, you're not, but you were bought with a price. I know you were. I was bought with a price. When Jesus died on Calvary's cross, he didn't just save my physical. He just didn't save my spiritual. He also saved my physical. And I ask you to come. Manifest that. Heal me, Lord God, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. That's no way. There's no way. The life of God, supernatural potential, flow through me and heal every body part. Bring it back and sing. With your temple, there's no noise in the temple, Lord God. There was no hammering in the temple of Solomon. That was being given to you, Lord God. And you wouldn't allow any noise to take place. And they couldn't go get instruments that made noise. No noise, no pounding. My body's pounding right now from the pain. This is your temple, Lord God. You control it, not me. Heal me. Take away the disease. Take away the sickness. Make me whole and sound. And I will utter a mighty testimony of your goodness so others can hear and their faith be peaked so they can believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm the oracle of God, Lord God, as I begin to declare what you've done in me to affect the lives of those that I come into contact with my friends, my associates, my family, my grandkids, they're watching me, and they're seeing you do a mighty work in me. They'll never forget it because we have a relationship. Do your mighty work, Lord, and nothing's too hard for the Lord. Lord, I believe in nothing's too hard for you. I cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth. I bring the captivity every thought and obedience to what your word has said. Every thought does not like what you said. I cast it down and breach the end of my faith. I know you will make a reality out of those things that you put together for me. Order my steps, Lord God, so I can walk to the place where the blessing is. Show me, guide me, lead me. Let me be a mighty bulwark for the Lord. In Jesus' name I ask you. And I agree with your word. I submit myself to you. Forgive me of every sin and every trespass. I want to live for you, Lord God. I want you to take me, Lord God, take my name and put it in the Lamb's book of life so that the, the, the gift of life is imparted to me in every facet that's available, Lord God. I ask for that today for those people who are in the audience. Save them, deliver them, develop them, grow them to the full statue of Christ Jesus, Lord God. Let them hear a word spoken in due season. That's going to cause growth to take place. In the spirit man, in the inward man of the heart, grow them so the outward man can manifest the blessings that you've given us as a privilege, as a child of God. I look for the privilege. I look for the manifestation. I look for the healing. I look for the benefit that you bring to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello. Thank you for listening to this resource. If you would like to receive our audio DVD catalog or desire more information about our ministry, you may write to us at P.O. Box 612-822, San Jose, California, 95161-2822. Or you may request information via our website at www.sjwofcc.org We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.